super, I'm not super uh, expert at OBS and uh, basically I tried for this time to uh, to record my voice on a different uh, track. It seems it didn't work. Yeah, the music, uh, Fabrice, the, the music is, is on purpose, but is it too loud? If, if it's too loud, just let me know and I, I can uh, really reduce it just by moving a slider. So, okay, great. You know, Fabrice, I, I really try to play the Twitch game where you have some background music and, uh, and some fancy uh, design uh, in order to, uh, well, to make it a bit more congenial. Anyway, uh, I think we can start. So uh, the topic for today is sentiment analysis and the way we're going to address that is simply by um, uh, looking at a, a real application, an application which is deployed and live on a, on a website, and we're going to see how how it gets the the results it gets. So I have plenty of comments after that on, you know. Uh, why sentiment analysis and the difficulties in sentiment analysis and the, the different types of solutions and stuff. Uh, but I suppose that it's much more engaging to, di to just dive. So let's do that. Okay, uh, what you see here is uh, the application we're going to discuss. So it's uh, no code functions, a web application I have uh, launched uh, a year and a half ago or a year ago. Uh, it offers click and point functions in data analysis or data science. So you just click on one of these blue buttons and, and you let um, you know, you just in a couple of steps, you you get the data set analyzed in some way. Uh, these functions are mostly uh, centered on text analysis and uh, network analysis. And the one we're going to see today is uh, which one <laughs> is this one on the left? Oh, that's in French. And uh, uh, so the the app can be localized or translated in uh, 108 different languages. So we're going to switch to English. Yeah, so sentiment analysis on the, on the left. Uh, if, uh, as it is one of the most uh, popular functions on this page, I have uh, added some uh, tests that you can uh, practice right on the home page. So, um, if you, if you, uh, I'm going to test it uh, just to demonstrate what it does, and then we're going to see how it does it. So let's pick uh, uh, a text, uh, an example. Uh, the one I keep using is I love chocolate. I know it's super simple but so you just type the text you need it must be a, a text in english and then you click on compute uh, can i zoom in let's see if it works sorry my screen is sometimes a bit jaggy no and there no not super yeah it's it's not centered but it's zoomed. So it says that it's a positive feeling, which is correct, I would say. I love chocolate. And then you can click on Y, and the Y button gives you uh, an explanation of how the, the thing reasoned to get the result. And it says that the positive feeling is because love has been identified in the text, and a condition has been verified that this word love is not immediately preceded by a negative term. Indeed, there is, it's not I don't love, it's just love. And there was no complicated decision to, uh, to be made. So I'm just going to 
try and see if I can if I can flip my I'm gonna see if I can flip my webcam because you know I'm looking on the left even if the screen is on the right and it's super it's not intuitive at all how can I do that uh, filter filter oh I think I knew how I think I can just Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you see it real time, but yeah. Okay, never mind. So I love chocolate and it's a positive feeling because uh, uh, love is in the text. So how is the app working in practice? Uh, let me switch to the code I'm using to uh, to implement this function. So the screen that you should see uh, now is uh, a, a code editor. Uh, the technical term is um, an integrated development environment. And what it is, it's called NetBeans. And this is basically a software that uh, provides you a lot of convenient services to code and um, uh, you know put your code into a server and check your code and uh, and whatever many things that are useful. But that's the main place where you would write code. Uh, so the code for uh, the sentiment analysis function is I'm just zooming on the. Uh, on the list that you see on the top left. As you see, I have uh, split the code to create the sentiment analysis function. I have split it in uh, a, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, sub-modules. Uh, the reason is that it makes it much easier and much quicker to code and maintain the code. Uh, as you see, it's going to be also super convenient to explain the code because I'm going to just explain each of the modules, uh, at least the most uh, important ones, I suppose, all of them. Uh, and that helps understanding the logic of the code. The first one we're going to start with is the tokenizer. So I love chocolate. Right? How do you decide that this is a positive or negative uh, sentiment? The very start is to cut the sentence into words. Until recently, and to be honest, until uh, this spring, so it's super recent, I was doing what I suppose most of the developers uh, do. I was just identifying the words in the sentence by splitting the sentence where you have a white space. You know, I, space, love, space, chocolate. And so if you detect the spaces in the sentence, well, super easy, uh, you find the words. And it's fine, right? Except that you can do so much better. Oops, can you still hear me? I hope you can hear me because here I see some lags. Well, let, I'm going to assume you can hear me. Um, so the tokenizer does f uh, a better job at uh, Thank you, Fabrice. Uh, the tokenizer does a much cleaner job at this step, which is identifying the words in a sentence. Uh, let me uh, zoom in and give you an example. So what you see on the, on the left on your screen is the list of files that I have in this module. Uh, the, the the most important one is uh, the this one, so I open it. 
uh, tuck, tuck, tuck. and we don't really care about the details, right? Right, it's good. So, uh, but as you see, I have some examples. Oh, and we have I love chocolate again. So if my setup is 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 as good as I expect it, I think that if I click there. Yes, if I click there, you're gonna see the you're gonna see the the result when I run just this module, not the whole stuff. So I love chocolate. How is it going to be uh, treated by just the tokenizer? Okay, I launch it, and you're gonna see the result. I hope right there. So look at it. Yeah, so it's there is a, a starting time. Oh no, je crois pas. <laughs> uh, oh yes, okay. It's supposed to work, right? It's just that I have uh, I I made a, uh, I typed somewhere. Okay, let's try again. So tokenizing, I love chocolate. Okay, so what it does is it identifies the terms as we would expect. I, space, love, space, chocolate. So it's interesting, but maybe you think nothing, noth nothing really useful. Uh, it, it adds uh, some fancy descriptions for white spaces, but uh, who really cares? Uh, now let's switch to a, a, a different example, which I have prepared. So the second, so let's let's deactivate I love chocolate and let's activate the next one. And here, believe me, is different. Uh, if you are, s the, the, the sentence is, I can't wait to see this performance. And then I have added some really fancy, weird uh, symbols. But it says, I will love it. Uh, smiley, 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 space, smiley, and then some uh, sad emojis. And then a space, and then that's the end. Honestly, if you would just split the if you would just split the text with spaces, so you would have I can't. Okay, that's good. You would have wait, but you would have wait with uh, you know with the asterisk or star signs to see this performance. You would have performance, but with the punctuation sign in the end. Uh, you would have I together with with the symbols before, and also what would you do with that? Would you keep it or not? Uh, if you want to keep it, you know, because punctuation signs can be emojis, so you would keep punctuation signs. But then it means that you would maybe keep this one as well, you know, the exclamation mark. And maybe you would keep the asterisk. So you would, uh, you would have situations where you should remove punctuations because, you know, it's just a verb. And you should remove the punctuation to see the verb. And sometimes you should keep the punctuation because it creates um, an emoji. Uh, so let's see how, again, white space splitting would not be super easy. So let's see how the tokenizer works on this one. I'm going to launch. Uh, I'm going to launch the code. 
Okay, go. Okay, so maybe what is not super easy to interpret is that the emojis are not displayed there. So, uh, but they are they have been taken into account. The emojis have been replaced by question marks. But in any case, I space can can't so can um, how is it called uh, upper comma or whatever apostrophe in French T. Weight, so weight has been really separated from the asterisk before and after to see this performance, exclamation point. Uh, emojis. I will love, I will love it. You see that the emoticon has been preserved. And then you have some uh, emojis and then the last emoticon uh, has been uh, preserved as well. So this tokenizer ma makes a wonderful job at... Uh, uh, it does not erase anything and it characterizes every different segment of the, of the sentence so that you can uh, uh, make use of it later for sent sentiment analysis. There is one thing where I'm not super happy. It's love. As you see, love, L, ar arobas, 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 VE. It would have been better that this thing would have been recognized not as a term followed by three punctuation signs followed by VE, it would have been better that it would have recognized it as one single word containing punctuation signs. Uh, so there is some improvement on, on this to be made. Uh, but for the rest, it's really perfect. Uh, I have a last... Yeah, because we're going to just do I love chocolate, comma, really, parentheses, especially with coffee, exclamation point parenthesis uh, just to show that again it preserves all of these things and I'm gonna show you right after how the preservation of all these kind of very specific punctuation signs and and emojis how it's gonna make a, a big difference in terms of the precision and accuracy of sentiment analysis okay so I have selected this new example. Let's move to the console to see the result. I launch the tokenizer. I uh, Let me say that, of course, uh, in real life, the tokenizer is just taking a, a split millisecond. Uh, the reason why it's so long is that it just compiles before the code compiles before it run, it's, it's running. So I love chocolate with a smiley, comma, really, especially with coffee. Uh, so I space love space chocolate space. It does find a smiley, really, space, opening parenthesis, especially space with coffee exclamation point end of end of parenthesis so it worked uh, great there uh, what did i want to show you oh yeah so that's that's it for the tokenizer uh, as you see it's i mean it's uh, it's as always it's a mix of it's not super exciting right in the sense that it's just something that makes some good job at a good job at uh, uh, splitting a sentence and identifying stuff in a sentence. But it, uh, I think that's because it's so low level and a bit boring that it's often super neglected in data science because it's perceived as 
you know, who cares? Uh, we just split on words and that's going to be fine. But actually, if you do that, you are not prepared to analyze all the intricacies and, and fineness of, of the sentiment in a sentence. So uh, how, does it, how is it achieved? Uh, you see on the, on the left of the screen the code for this uh, tokenizer. It's pretty short. It's oh, my screen keeps. Uh, we don't see the uh, number of lines, but it's. I don't know why the number of lines just disappeared. How can I, how can I show the numbers of the lines? It's in view, I suppose. View, show line numbers. Well, they are supposed to be there. Why don't we see the line numbers? Strange. Is the Twitch streaming effect? I always, always, always see my line numbers, you know, the number of the lines of the code. But just today, for some uh, reason, the lines don't appear. Maybe there is some weird shortcut here. No, I can't find it. That's strange. That's so strange because show line number is ticked. What can I say? We won't have line numbers today. But just to tell you, it's about uh, 250 lines of code. Uh, and and if I were were to write it a bit in a bit cleaner in, in a cleaner way, that would be two hundred lines of code. Uh, I insist it lays the foundations for everything that follows, and in particular, uh, you don't see it there on the on the right, but uh, for each term that is found in the text, the position of you know the index of the term in the text is recorded uh, so that you can uh, find later where, you know, where in the text, not just what in the text, but where in the text did the, the, the sentiment occur. Okay, once we have tokenized the sentence, let me check my notes with the tokenizer. Uh, we're going to detect n-grams in the, in the text. Uh, so an n-gram is super simple. It's the uh, it's a sequence of words. So in I love chocolate, a unigram is a sequence of one word. So you have three unigrams in I love chocolate. I love chocolate. B-grams are sequences of uh, Bigrams, sorry, I'm looking at my code, which is, as you see, or why is it red? I suppose I have, I must have, yeah, I guess what I did. Yeah, it's just that I, basically I type on my keyword for a shortcut, but uh, it also writes in my code. I was saying that a unigram is just one word. A bigram is a sequence of two words. So you have two bigrams in I love chocolate. You have I love and you have love chocolate. You have one trigram in I love chocolate, which is I love chocolate. And in the, in the sentiment analysis app that uh, I'm developing, uh, I go up to four grams or quadrigrams, I suppose. So a sequence of four consecutive words and you have none, no quadrigram in I love chocolate because the sentence is too short. So how do you detect n-grams? I have a special module for that, which basically consists in one important or two important files. The others are 
from an uh, you know from a, an ancient time the first thing that you need to do and i suppose that not many programs do it actually even if it's super important what you need to do is to split the text into what i call sentence like <laughs> it's a bit fancy into sentence like fragments alors um, all the two examples are in french uh, they were taken from a tweet i suppose so let's find something in Eng in english uh, let's find us i love chocolate uh, because it is so sweet and delicious and delicious really I'm honest okay so what I just did is uh, uh, type a sentence as an example uh, and this sentence will be tokenized with the previous module and now n-grams will be detected in this sentence but as you see and please follow because again that's I did that in the last few months it makes sense to detect that I love is a big gram because these two words follow each other right uh, it makes sense to say that love chocolate is a big gram as well right but does it make sense to say that chocolate because uh, are a big gram well technically they follow each other uh, but in in um, in reality there is this comma between the two which uh, and the comma is important because the comma just points to the fact that there is a separation in this sentence between i love chocolate which is the first sentence so that's why i call it sentence like fragment so you have i love chocolate then you have a separation then you have because it is so sweet and delicious and it makes no sense to detect a, a big gram that would uh, bridge or that, that would span the two statements right uh, you should detect n grams within the first seg within the first segment within the second segment uh, within the third segment which is just one word really and the parenthesis inside the parenthesis you also have a segment in itself uh, if you if you i don't know uh, who is watching this uh, i know very veronica and fabrice are, are there but uh, I, I don't know to to what Veronica, I, I don't know if you are uh, um, familiar with n-gram detection, but my impression is that it's super rare to find this kind of uh, precision in the detection of n-grams. Usually, analysts they just remove the punctuation uh, and then you proceed to n-gram detection. But if you respect and and distinguish the punctuation as we just did with the tokenizer then you the detection you already have a big benefit in terms of the quality of your n-gram detection and in this case as i just said you will not have chocolate because as an n-gram so let's do it uh, as an example i'm gonna run it so this example is going to first run the tokenizer from the previous module and then is going to detect uh, segments so let's do that uh, i for you i zoom on the outcome oh. 
My screen keeps shifting to black. I don't know why it's so annoying. Okay, let's segment the sentence I love chocolate because, because it is so sweet and delicious. Really, I'm honest. C'est parti. Yeah, of course, because I have typed somewhere. Let's do it again. So what did what did it do? Oh, it's not perfect. I love chocolate because it is so sweet and delicious. But really, it it has it didn't split on really. Uh, it does find I'm honest. So let's check where the thing can. I suppose it's as simple as. I suppose I didn't add a dot there. Yeah. So as you see, let me show you. <laughs> I don't understand why it's broken like that. So the split is as simple as this single sentence. So I'm going to add. Yeah, I'm just going to add a dot where the sentence should split. Okay, and now we should have, I'm going to launch again. So let's try it again. Hmm. Still not why is it not splitting on really if I have added? Oh, because that's really is because when I look at that, when I when I zoom for you to see the screen, it writes in my file, which is super annoying. So back to back to uh, testing it and I'm pretty confident it's going to work. Yeah, great. So the n-gram detection starts by splitting the, 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 the document into uh, what I call, in a clumsy way, I call that, uh, you know, look at the title of the file sentence like fragments detector it's it's just that i'm pretty bad at finding simple uh simple terms once it has done that the second step is to do the ngram finder bis because <laughs> i had several versions ngram finder bis for text fragments so that's the one we're gonna play with now Uh, I have two examples. The first one is this sentence is hard. Well, I don't know why it is hard. The second sentence is, I suppose, more interesting. I love it, comma, really, and I'm serious in a parenthesis. So let's do n-gram detection on this one. I launch it. Go. OK, so that's what we get. I love. I love a big gram. It. Love it. I love it. 
Then it moves to the sentence like fragment number two, which is just one word, really. Then it moves to the parenthesis, which was I am serious. And it says I. It finds I am. I am serious. I'm serious. I am serious. So even if, let's go back to what was the sentence. As you see, the sentence was full of commas and, and parentheses. Uh, so having a module which is dedicated to n-gram detection makes it sure that you have a clean result. Uh, you don't have artifacts, weird stuff uh, that pollute the quality of what you are trying to do. Um, so I'm super conscious. It's we we have not discussed sentiment analysis yet, but I uh, I repeat, uh, if you want to have clean results, there is some care to be uh, done to handle text by keeping all its precision and uh, yeah doing it uh, precisely. If you are curious, the uh, the sentence like fragments detector. Uh, so that's the file you see there. Uh, it's like it's like 100 lines of code and, and very uh, you know very super simple code. And the ngram finder is yeah 100 lines of code. And by the way. All these lines are useless, right? These lines are just the lines I use to test the code. The code itself is just that. So uh, 40 lines of code, actually. OK, uh, we have tokenized the text. We have detected n-grams. And I'm happy to say that now the real stuff starts on clean foundations. So the next module is where really the action is. It's called heuristics. In this module, you have different stuff. So let me expand it. Uh, what do we have here? Yeah. Uh, we have first uh, two, uh, let me highlight these two uh, folders. We have one folder for lexicons in English and one folder for lexicons in French. Uh, I open the one for English and as you see you have plenty of text files uh, as a convenience, I also uh, have this Excel file uh, which is just containing a, a version of all the text files. It's just because it's easier to, to work in an Excel file. So let me open the Excel file um, directly in Excel on my laptop because that's going to be easier to show it to you. Uh, tuk, 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 tuk. Uh, that's here, that's here. English, Excel. Okay. OK, great. Um, super easy, as you see. It's a list. Uh, let me first show you the tabs. So in this Excel file, you have different lists, a list of terms that relate to the a positive tone, a list of words that tend to be negative in tone. Hypersatisfaction is just a, a, a trial I made. 
uh, terms that are specific to strengths of opinion. So you have, you know, uh, a lot of them. Let me. So mind blown, literally, wholly, incredibly. Uh, you have a lot of uh, curse words as well. Fracking, freaking, spectacularly, etc., etc. You need to keep track of these words. Uh, yeah, that's. Oh, and you have negations as well. Negations are important because they, they, you know, they shift the the polarity of the sentiment. I love chocolate. I don't love chocolate. So you have don't, but you have don't be far from, haven't had, isn't as, lacks, never, whatever, no such thing as. Okay, so you have these lists. Let's pick the one on positive words because you have this list of terms and next to each term, uh, next, next to each term, you have this thing. This thing is it just means that when you find big ups in the term, in the, in the sentence, big ups, you will not say that it's a positive sentiment. First, you need to check for whatever conditions are described in this column. So very often for positive terms, there is one simple condition, which is it should not be immediately preceded by a negation. It should not is the not is there, you know, it's an exclamation mark. The exclamation mark is a convention in coding, and I just use the same here, uh, to say not. So if big ups, which is a cheering kind of expression, if big ups is not preceded by a positive, uh, by a negative, uh, by a negation, sorry, then you should give it an it, sh it should give an 11. 11 is just a code for positive. I just chose that. But if it is preceded by a negation, it should yield the code 12, which is the code I used for negations. So as you see, lexicons are a bit <coughs> uh, improved there. It's not simply a list of terms. Each term comes with a condition or several conditions. And depending on whether the condition is verified or not, an outcome is uh, given. So here it's pretty simple, right? Uh, is it preceded by a negation or not? But if you are looking above at better. Better is a term which is often associated with something which is positive, like um, I like it better, it's kind of positive, but in many cases it's actually neutral or even negative. And so let's look at there. Better should basically look at the condition first. If A so A, B, and C just mean the conditions that you see in this column. So if A is verified and B is verified and C is verified, then it should then it's positive. Otherwise, the code is zero, which is neutral. So what are A, B, and C? A is it should not be preceded by a negation. Okay, then plus 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 is to make a distinction, you know, uh, uh, to make a separation between a condition. The second condition is it should not be followed by a specific term, which is not or start. Because, you know, you'd better start. It's negative or at least it's not positive. And it should not be immediately preceded by a specific term, which is would or, you know, or just D or would, like I would better, it's not positive in this case. So if these three conditions are met, then it's positive. Otherwise, it's neutral and, you know, I, I might revise this rule and actually uh, 
consider whether it should be even negative in some in some uh, in some cases. So that's what the let's go back to the code. You know, that's what you have in this module. You have a list of heuristics in English, a list of heuristics like this one in French. You have there uh, a list of emojis and whether they convey a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment. And then in the... Oh, let me show here. You have a catalog of all the conditions I let you have a look at them. I think I have 30 conditions. All super simple, right? Uh, the, the, the titles are pretty uh, self-explanatory, so I, I just let you have a, a, a look at it. And if, I, if you click on any of them, Let me zoom out oh, again. If you look at uh, a condition I took uh, randomly, it's a super simple code, right? It's just to check. So this one is, is the term the first in the text? So this, this code is just checking whether the word is the first in the text. Uh, okay. And in the tools, this is where you have some a bit of complex code, uh, especially uh, especially these two ones. Uh, these two files contain the code that uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, apply the conditions. So let me just show you this one here. But it's pretty, again, self-explanatory. Oh. <laughs> These shortcuts are going to drive me mad. Okay, so let's zoom. Oops, why? Oh yeah, of course. If I zoom on... Oh, full. I'm just trying to zoom on the center of the text. No, will not work. If I do that... Okay. So this is where basically you, this is where whatever I have written in the Excel file. So for example, I have written, is it in a segment ending with exclamation mark? If this is written in the Excel file, it's going to trigger the you know, the file we have just seen in the catalog is going to trigger this function. And this function gives a true or false result. So it's, in terms of coding complexity, it's super simple. There's no, uh, it's really not uh, sophisticated. OK, good. And that's, so that's how uh, most of the work is being done. The heuristics are there. And so how do you, the, the, the next module is the one that orchestrates everything. So it's, I call it core. This is the module that launches the tokenization and the n-gram detection. And then for each n-gram, it checks whether it appears in one of the lists of the vocabulary and uh, it, uh, if it exists, it triggers 
the what we have seen in the heuristics module where uh, the conditions are verified uh, and uh, and in the end what you get is a list of conditions that have been checked and their results you know was this term um, uh, present in the lexic for positive terms was it present in the lexicons for negative terms and if so did the conditions attached to these terms were they met and verified or not all of that is triggered by the core module uh, it has a lot of subfolders because I had many sub projects, sub projects, but basically the the only one and the only file I need is this one classifier sentiment for one document, which is how big. Oh, the lines came back. Okay, uh, which is like two hundred lines of code, which is uh, which is super small, especially that, especially that. All the lines that you see in in pink, all the lines you see in pink are comments. You know, it just helps me uh, understand the code better when I have comments. And as you see, between the empty lines and the comments, the actual lines of code you don't have many, right? So it's just a loop where it takes all the n-grams that were detected, and for each n-gram, it checks whether they are present in the heuristics. If so, it checks the conditions and so on and so forth. In the end, for a given document, you have a list of terms that were found uh, and the conditions has been, have been verified or not. So if I love chocolate, it's super simple because in the end, you have one term that was found in the list of positive words. The conditions were, you had one condition. Love is not preceded by a negative term. So that's it. You know, you can give the result. It's positive. But what if you have a bit more complicated uh, sentences where you have, I love chocolate, but uh, I, prefer, I prefer coffee. Um, you know, what do, just checking the terms is not enough in this case. So that's why we have we are almost in the end, at the end. We have a last or before last module, which is decision. And decision is really super simple. Maybe you can see it where with just the titles of the files I've given. Like, is there a trace of sarcasm? Um, is the text containing a moderator? So I call moderator something like uh, but or however or whereas, stuff like that. Uh, so these are the moments where all the sentiments that were found in the sentence, they can be deleted, you know. Uh, for example, I love chocolate, but I prefer coffee. There is a simple rule that says that everything before but is removed. So these kind of things. And I'm just seeing the time running, running. So I'm moving now to the last one, which is explanation. And explanation is big. Because in principle, everything, I ha everything that I have explained uh, about this uh, sentiment analysis function, everything is easy to, you know, to, uh, it's, it's transparent for the user. What I mean is that when you say I love chocolate is positive, in principle, the type of model that I've just described, it, it's super easy to explain to the user that it's because of love in I love chocolate that the final sentiment was positive. You know, in principle, it's super easy to explain. But in practice, uh, you still need to, to do it. You still need to write the code 
so that uh, let me show you there you still need to write the code so that when uh, do I hope you you see it here no you don't oh, yeah, of course so you still need to write the code so that when the user clicks on Y so let me uh, maybe oops okay the thing is completely broken nice okay uh, you st so I love chocolate you click on compute it finds oh it's in French sorry let's go back to English so it finds that it has a positive feeling and when you click on Y it's gonna retrieve you know everything that uh, that I have explained, like, you know, it's going to retrieve the words it has found, so love in this case, and it's going to retrieve the fact that the conditions attached to this word were verified or not verified. Right? So here you see that that's what it does. This word has been identified in the text love, and the condition has been verified this word is not immediately preceded by a negative. The thing is, how do I get that in practice? You need some software, right? And that's exactly, uh, that's exactly what this last module, this one here, does. Uh, this last module contains the code that converts every uh, item that was or every action that was taken by the previous modules it converts them into some uh, HTML you know some HTML uh, uh, code or fragment or writing that a user will understand right because users don't care that I call 11 for positive sentiment or 12 for negative sentiment and they don't care for the very ugly uh, you know titles of files I'm using and stuff it, they prefer something in you know in the language we speak so to convert from this ugly stuff to natural language uh, this is what the module does and how does it do it well with simply a lot of lines of code uh, let me show you this subfolder just to show you the so the explanations are available in 108 languages I use Google Translate for that let me show you for English Oops, that's going to be a bit complicated, but we're going to do it. So what you, well, you don't see it so well. I suppose that's going to be fine here, yeah. So what you see here is all the things that can appear in an explanation. And what you see on the right is all the languages that it got translated into. So let's switch. Can I find English somewhere? Yeah, bear with me because it's not uh, alphabetically ordered, so where is English? English is here. It was there a second ago. I lost it. Why? Sorry for the... Yeah, I found it.
So that's how I, I achieve the effect of, sorry for the, for the scrolling, that's how I achieve the effect of uh, in displaying for the user an explanation. I have, a pre, I have created a predefined list of statements that correspond to each of the conditions that is in my code. I don't know how many uh, statements I have. Not that many. Uh, something like 100 or 100 to 200. And this and, and the module Yumigun explain just has a tons of boring lines of code that go through all the actions that were taken and it turns them or it um, it yeah it uh, triggers the the display of the statements that you see here. Um, I went a bit with the, for the, an extra mile in the sense that it also uh, uh, so it triggers that in HTML format, you know, for uh, if you want to display that on a web page, but also JSON. JSON is the uh, a data exchange format. Basically, that's the way you you send data over the web. Uh, you don't send HTML. Uh, if if you want just to use it with a computer, uh, so it's it's also formatted in a in a JSON format. Uh, the code is not super beautiful because again it's a lot of hard work, uh, and one of my goals is to clean this code to to have it uh, to make it a bit more clear. But it works. Uh, as far as I could test, and I would like to thank Veronica for extensive uh, testing. Um, it works great uh, as far as uh, as we could see. Okay, I realized that uh, well, it was super long. So thank you for your patience. I'm gonna chop chop this uh, video, the replay, in in chapters so that you can. Uh, navigate to n-grams or heuristics or tokenizer and not uh, review uh, all the video. And I realized I had many, many other comments like, you know, the difficulties. So let me add a very few comments. The first one is that this method can be uh, expanded to other languages super easily. You don't have to write more code, you just need to write new lexicons, you know, the Excel file I showed you. So uh, non-coders can, can do that. Second, the app is free and open source. I, I really want to uh, highlight that. So the app, you know, this this app is free, but the code, everything I've showed you is open source and available on GitHub and it can be used for non-commercial purposes and for commercial purposes. So uh, it's like, uh, yeah, free for you. Uh, what do I want to add? Yes, user feedback on the on this app, on the app, if you see that the sentiment is misclassified or can be improved or whatever. You have a feedback button on every page. Let me show it here. The feedback button, you have it on every page of the, of the app. Uh, but you also have, you just, in one click, you just signal an error. You have nothing else to do. And it sends me a report that something was wrong uh, with your tests. So I wanted to mention that it's important, and yeah, and then we could uh, we could discuss other approaches to sentiment analysis and sarcasm, and and Veronica is saying something. 
Yes, Veronica, I have with the students at my school, uh, EMU Business School, I have uh, suggested to them that uh, they could work as uh, research assistants uh, and uh, develop and translate the lexicons in the native languages they speak. So I have told them that, uh, you know, the, at the beginning of the academic year, like in September, and now uh, I need to coordinate and launch that. Uh, so I didn't do it so far, but I received 10 to 20 emails by students who, who were interested in participating. So, you know, it's, uh, it just needs to be done. But in principle, it's, it's a low hanging fruit. I mean, it's not difficult. Um, and I, I have submitted a paper that explains uh, how sentiment analysis is being used in marketing and especially for the analysis of customer reviews. So hopefully this uh, paper will be published one day and I'm going to be super happy to, to share it with, uh, with you here or, or else. Okay, well, we did it. Thanks a lot for uh, staying and uh, listening. Uh, if you have any other question, uh, I'm always available on Twitter, um, by email, on LinkedIn. Uh, so don't hesitate uh, reaching out. Uh, I'm constantly working on, on this function and, and the others. Actually, I uh, you know, preparing for this uh, stream, uh, I spotted a, a small uh, mistake or imprecision in the tokenizer. So I, this morning I, I just improved the tokenizer a bit. Uh, and um, yes, so it's continuous development. Thanks to all of you for viewing and uh, see you next Wednesday f at 3 p.m. Paris time for another session on R&D in AI. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Merci Fabrice. Merci d'être resté jusqu'au bout. Ça fait vraiment plaisir. <laughs>